Hello everybody, it's Lauren from It's the Kellys and I am coming to you from Tahiti today and I am solo on this trip in a super romantic destination. My husband's not here, how silly is that? But you know what, in all reality, I travel solo all the time. This is actually my 21st country that I have traveled solo to and a lot of you guys are super amazed by that and really want to know how to do everything. So today what I want to do is answer all the questions that you guys have asked me about solo travel, especially for women, and answer it. I am so excited to answer these questions because I really feel like everyone should solo travel at least once in their life because it really is life-changing. It really is enjoyable. You know, this is something you can do for yourself. Think of it like self-care. Oh, I really should say before I really start answering these questions that I do not have travel anxiety whatsoever. I am not anxious about being on a plane. I am not anxious about going to a new country. I am not anxious about the unknown. If anything, those are the type of things that my soul thrives on. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that that's what they freak out about. I plan out a lot of stuff and that's going to be a big theme of this video is the things that I have planned is the reason why I'm able to do the solo trip so effortlessly. Being anxious about flying by yourself. Learn to embrace it and love it. Learn to embrace the alone time. Eating alone. I love it. Learn to embrace it. It's it's so easy. People are like, well, how do you eat alone when you travel? It's like, well, I walk into a restaurant, I get seated, I order the food, I eat it, and I pay for the food and then I leave. The fears that you have and the anxieties that you have about solo travel, there's nothing that you can do to really prepare yourself for them. You just need to learn to embrace it. Let's start answering your questions. Where is the first place that I ever solo traveled and how I did I decide that one? And this is actually a pretty funny story. I first solo traveled to the country of Colombia in South America because I wanted to go to Cartagena and I was going to go with a friend. At the very last minute, that friend, literally the very last minute, the morning of, the uh, friend decided she no longer wanted to go to Colombia for whatever reason. And so I said, well, I'm going anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I did and I jumped on a plane and I went and it had a really really rough start which honestly I hope never happens to you guys I actually super duper got scammed at the airport and I was actually in tears and almost wanted to fly home and I said I can't do this I can't do this and then I got right to my hotel I dried the tears off of my eyes went to the main square in Cartagena and just started dancing and having fun with everybody that night and then I actually went on Girls Love Travel which is a Facebook group for girls that love travel that's really big and I said hey is anyone here in Cartagena right now because I ended up being here solo and I'd really love to meet some other girls that are traveling so let me know if you're here and somebody responded right away and I had a friend for the rest of that night and for a little bit more on the trip and by the end of that trip you guys I said I have to solo travel all the time it was so amazing it was a rough start but it was so amazing and I've been doing it ever since as much as I can. Now let's go ahead and talk about why I love to solo travel and one answer is going to be very cheesy and one answer is going to seem kind of selfish but hear me out and let me know in the comments what you think. Let's get the cheesy answer out of the way. The cheesy answer is like I said kind of self-discovery, self-care, you really get to spend a lot of time with yourself, which I think is personally very important for a woman to be able to do. You know, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're in a relationship, I think that people need to have their alone time and really value it. Walking around at the beach, laying there with your own thoughts, doing whatever you want to do, exploring, it means a lot to me. And I think it means a lot to Brian that I do my own self-discovery solo trips because he knows how much I love them. Now for the selfish answer, a lot of people really agree with me. Here's the thing, whether you travel with one other person, whether you travel with two other people, whether you travel with a group, you're always going to have to compromise 
at some point, let's say you like to wake up really, really early and catch the sunrise and that person likes to sleep in until noon. You like to go to bed early and let's say your travel partner wants to go out and party and stay out till 3 a.m. every night. Do you need coffee before getting out of bed? Do you like to shower in the morning or at night? Do you like to go to museums? Do you like to lay around? Do you like to take naps? You know, all of those things can really make or break a trip with somebody. And you can talk to your travel partner all day before the trip and just say, okay, well, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. And you know what? Everyone's so excited about the trip. Everyone's gonna agree to everything and you're gonna get on the trip and somebody is going to compromise always. And it's usually that one person that's compromising and the trip doesn't end up being what they thought it would be. So what I like to do is take my bucket list trips, like this beautiful trip to Tahiti, Morea, and Bora Bora, and go by myself and do literally whatever I wanted to do, whenever I wanted to do it. And that is such a magical thing on a trip. All right, so let's talk about loneliness because that's something that you guys brought up too. I think that a lot of you have been on trips with other people and trips with maybe big groups of people and you just think what in the heck am I going to do alone whatever you want to do but when it comes to loneliness it's one of two ways and I really do both I either embrace the loneliness and have an amazing time by myself or I go on a lot of day trips or really try to go out of my way to find other people that seem really inviting or that are traveling alone and I usually end up making friends and a lot of those people have stayed friends for years they really really have be approachable and friendly and meet people if you want to if you don't want to meet people that's okay too now let's talk about budget with solo travel because this is actually a really interesting topic and I'm really glad that somebody asked the question because I wasn't even thinking about bringing it up until it got asked. Budget for a solo trip is very interesting because regardless of whatever vacation you're taking, you're going to have to pay for your flight. But when it comes to accommodations, you're usually going to split the accommodation with another person. And when you're by yourself, you don't have that luxury. You have to pay for it all yourself. So I book my trips pretty far in advance to the point where when I'm looking for an accommodation, I pretty much have the pick of wherever I want to. And so that way I can lock in a pretty good price and get whatever I want. I'm not gonna want some $500 a night crazy place, but I'm not gonna want some super cheap place either. It really depends. And this could really be a whole different video as to how I choose my accommodations when I solo travel, because there's a lot I could say about it, but it's really just gonna come down to planning as early as possible and getting that hotel that you really want for as cheap as possible. Now, budget is not just about flight and hotels. You need to think about eating and activities. So same thing, I plan all my activities. I always do things on Viator. That's where I'm gonna meet people. That's the stuff that my money is gonna to go to. And for me, the last thing that I really plan on is the food. I am not a big foodie. I'm actually a very picky eater. You know, here I am in the middle of the South Pacific and I don't eat seafood. It really just depends on what the budget is and what my schedule allows for. There's a lot of times I will go to restaurants by myself. I will usually do more of a lunch as opposed to a dinner. And then the rest of the time I am grocery shopping a little bit, just enough to get, you know, salami cheese and a baguette or something or I will get a smoothie or a coffee. Also, I'm going to try to look for a hotel that includes breakfast if I can. And if not, then I'm going to try to look for tours that include some sort of food. This country specifically was extremely, extremely, extremely expensive when it came to food and I really had absolutely no idea. So if one of my tours included lunch, I didn't go out to dinner. Also, transportation to and from everywhere you have to consider that when it comes to budgeting as well you know if you're with a group of people and you take taxis that can definitely be more affordable but if you're by yourself taking a taxi 
you have to pay for the whole thing yourself. So, you know, opting for public transportation, if that's something, walking, if that's something you enjoy, take all those into consideration with your budget for sure. So how do I choose where I'm going to go solo? You guys, I would literally go anywhere in the world solo. That's not an exaggeration. Obviously, any country that's going to be open to Americans to go to, honestly. With enough research and enough planning, you can go anywhere by yourself. But for anyone that hasn't traveled solo before, I mean, Europe is really easy. Go on an African safari if you want to. Something that does a lot of tours, you know what I mean? Maybe traveling by yourself without people that you know very well. Maybe you need to start by going on some sort of group tour. Do a Contiki tour, do a G Adventures tour, if that's what you need to ease into getting out of your comfort zone a little bit. But, you know, uh, when people really wanna start traveling abroad, besides doing, you know, the Caribbean or something like that, I always say, go to Thailand. You know, go to Thailand. They are so welcoming and so friendly and it's so cheap. And it's really a place that everyone I know that's been there, it's really kind of tugged at their heartstrings a little bit. And I think that place can really open everybody up to wanting to solo travel even more. If you're American, then going to Europe is going to be super easy, okay? Everyone's gonna speak English, there's gonna be food, there's gonna be public transportation. You know, the Euro is, is pretty close to the US dollar. What do you want to do? Do you wanna lay on a beach? Do you wanna hike? Do you want to go to a theme park? Do you want to go to museums all day? Do you want to volunteer? Do you want to see animals and wildlife? Any of those things you can do in any of the places that are on your bucket list and you can do it alone. All right, so essential items to pack when you're solo traveling. Carry-on bag, for sure. You guys know that was gonna be my answer. Who wants to carry a 60-pound huge check-on bag? and a carry-on and a personal item when you're by yourself. You're gonna want a really good portable charger. I have this one right here from Anchor. I use this all the time. I take pictures and videos with my phone. I use it for Google Maps. You know, if I'm wandering around and I turn down somewhere because I'm looking at street art or something and I need to find my way back, I need to have a charged phone. You know, just have everything well organized. You know, your travel documents, you know, have all of that. Um, have some cash, have multiple cards just in case. I use my Amex a lot and here half of the places didn't use Amex so I had to use a Chase. So what if I only had my Amex, what would I have done? Always have your adapters with you so that you can charge everything. Have travel locks if you want to, especially if you're staying in a hostel. Have your travel itinerary and share it with friends and family. And what I also like to do is write down all the places that I'm staying at with the address and the phone number just in case and have it either in my phone or on a little business card or something like that because not only are you going to need to fill that stuff out in immigration and you might not have service right when you land to be able to look it up but then that way you just automatically know where you're staying just in case your phone does die and you have no idea where to go you know the name of your hotel you know the address of your hotel and you're good to go navigating transportation solo so i plan on doing a whole video about this because a lot of you guys have asked about transportation and navigating i'm going to tell you right now that google maps is my absolute best friend and i look stuff up in advance and i have it with me when i'm going everywhere so what i like to do is favorite everything on Google Maps that I want to do while I am there. And then I also have my hotel hearted, different restaurants hearted, everything like that, so that they're automatically saved. So if you want walking directions from your hotel to this restaurant, just press start here, press destination here, and it will literally tell you how to walk there or public transportation or tell you how to drive. I have rented a car on this island and drove taxis and walking and even hitchhiking. Sorry, mom. All right, let's talk about the biggest one. You guys want to know about safety. I don't know. I, anyone that's ever traveled with me knows that I'm just kind of a badass. Like I just, <laughs> I don't, I don't get scared, you guys, to be perfectly honest. I think everyone is so comfortable in their home and 
going out by themselves, they just really think that they're going to be a target. And, you know, I know the world is a scary place and I know we've all seen the movie Taken and I know that we've, you know, kind of read the headlines and everything, but I'm more scared in America half the time than I am in other countries. But let's talk about some precautions that you can take. I am sitting here in the middle of nowhere holding a $900 camera in my hand with a big microphone. I have two iPhones on me, <laughs> you know, like, so this is going to sound really silly, but just don't flash all your goods and your electronics when you're walking around. I feel extremely safe in the city. I don't, yeah, nobody's even looked twice at me sitting here vlogging in this park right now. If you're nervous about wearing your big diamond ring, then don't wear it. If you're nervous about carrying around your iPhone, keep it in your purse. Again, I'm gonna bring up research. You know, if you're going to Paris alone and for the very first time, literally look up Paris scams and see what they're gonna try to do to you in the street when you're by yourself. 22 countries solo, 88 countries, you know, in total. It's very, very rare that I feel scared whether I'm by myself or whether I'm with another person. You know, familiarize yourself with the cultural norms and try not to do anything stupid. You know, if it's a country that doesn't really drink, then don't get drunk. If it's, if it's a country that doesn't show their shoulders and their knees, don't show your shoulders and your knees. Share your travel itinerary with your friends and family at home. Say, hey, listen, tomorrow I'm flying to blah, blah, blah. 12 o'clock, I'm supposed to be here. I'm gonna check in with you, and if you don't hear from me, check in with me. Share your location with people at home. You know what I mean? Where all of a sudden, if you're supposed to be in Paris and your phone is showing you somewhere else, then either you went on a totally rogue little adventure or something happened. You know, try to get reliable accommodations in decent areas. Um, look on Google Maps and Google Earth when you find a place on Expedia. Look at how long it's gonna to take to walk places. Look at what the neighborhood looks like. Just be smart, have some intuition, follow your gut, and you'll be totally fine. All right, so I think that is the answer to all of your guys' questions. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any more questions, feel free to comment down below. I am really happy to discuss solo travel with you guys a lot. There are a ton of amazing influencers out there that only solo travel that are doing the game so well. And I will never stop solo traveling, even though I'm married. I urge you to, to do it. I don't care if you're 19, I don't care if you're 72. Solo travel, pack light, see the world, do your bucket list trip. If you can't find anyone to go on your bucket list trip with you, go by yourself. Seriously, go by yourself. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Let me know your other questions. Let me know where you want to go solo. Have you traveled solo before? Do you want to solo travel? I want to know everything. I want to help you. I want you to go. And if you're at the same place as me at the same time, I'll totally hang out with you. All right, guys, I'm going to uh, lay here and read my book and eat my macarons because I'm by myself and I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Bye.